Okay. So, good day everyone. So, this is our first topic in engineering economy. This is uh, 109. Uh, by the way, my name is uh, Engineer Calagadario. So, I'm a licensed civil engineer and graduated as cum laude at the University of Southeastern Philippines. So, my uh, work experience is uh, I'm a review instructor at Padilla Review. I'm a review instructor at Padilla Review Center and I work as a cost engineer at my Air Summit uh, Construct uh, Company and a site engineer at uh, MGS Construction. So now uh, I'm currently connected at the University of Mindanao. So, alright. Huh? So, ako yung magiging uh, speaker nito. So, yung first topic natin sa engineering economy is uh, about uh, engineering economic analysis. So, before we start a discussion, so let's define first what is economics. So, economics is, it explores the questions of how investing in education helps to develop workers' skills. Yan, no? So, it's all about investment. Investment on skills. So, it proves questions like how to tell when big businesses or big labor unions are operating in a way that benefits society as a whole and when they are operating in a way that benefits their owners or members at the expense of others. So, a uh, little... May video akong naka naka invite dito sa PowerPoint. No? So, view natin yung na yung uh, meaning ng economics. So, economics is divided into two groups. You have the microeconomics and the macroeconomics. So, if you say uh, microeconomics, so that is focus on the actions of individual agents within the economy like uh, workers and businesses while macroeconomics looks at the economy as a whole. No? So from the word itself, micro means um, maliit, diba? And ma macro means uh, malaki. So, as a whole, no? So it's like uh, integration and derivative in calculus. So, uh, anyway, so macroeconomics focus on broad uh, issues such as uh, growth of production, and the number of unemployed people, the inflationary, inflationary increase in price, government deficit, and the levels of exports and imports. So, yeah. No? So, big siya na, oh, malaki yung minaaral nila. No? So, most probably sa economics talaga yung may mga ganito. No? So, sa atin, uh, lalo na sa atin, uh, sa amin, na civil engineer, is uh, we are more focused on microeconomics no? kasi yung ina-analyze natin is individual agents like like, like yung kumpanya nyo lang no? so yun no? so microeconomics yung ginagamit natin so once we talk about macroeconomics uh, ibang usapin yan no? buong Pilipinas yung ina-aral mo no? ina-analyze mo so yun so this is an economics lecture by Garrett Peterson so, maganda yung pagka-explain niya. So, uh, makinig din tayo. What is economics? The typical first-year student walks into his first economics class with very little idea of what economics is. He might have heard something like, Economics is the study of money. Or, Economics is another word for accounting. Or, Economics is hard, don't take that class. But none of those are true. Economics is the study of the use of scarce resources that have alternative uses. That's the classic definition of economics. Basically, there are people, and people need resources to fulfill their desires. These resources cannot be infinite, but the desires can be, so people need to make choices about how to use their scarce resources. Economists study these choices. All economic questions fall into one of two categories positive and normative. 
Positive economics describes what is, and normative economics argues for what ought to be. So a question like, why do people use money, is a positive question, and should people use money, is a normative question. A general rule of thumb is that if your economic model has no value judgments, it's positive economics. Whereas if it does have value judgments, it's normative economics. Since to tell someone what he ought to do, you first have to judge what is best for him. Economics is also divided into microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics studies the behavior of individual agents and markets, while macroeconomics studies the behavior of the entire economy. Economists also have their own branch of statistics called econometrics that specialize to analyzing economic data. Since economic data usually comes from the real world and not from controlled experiments, econometrics faces mathematical challenges that other fields might not. The tools economists have developed to study human behavior have broad uses outside of what we would traditionally consider economics. Economists study not only markets, but things like crime, war, the family, religion, culture, politics, law, and even genetics. That's why it's not unusual to see papers by psychologists, sociologists, criminologists, political scientists, anthropologists, biologists, neuroscientists, or legal scholars being co-authored by economists. Yun, no? So, kung gusto nyo pang makinig ng mga lesson ni uh, Peterson, is punta, punta lang kayo sa YouTube channel niya. Maganda din yung mga uh, mga YouTube na videos niya. Yun, no? So, yun nga, uh, uh, in, in economics is we also dealing with the uh, law of supply and demand and the demand and the supply that we have used is based on price however uh, the constant uh, the constant uh, coefficient of the equation refers to non-quantifiable factors so it means uh, that is not that is uh, non-responsive to price so these are the common uh, non-quantifiable factors Bali, hindi siya nasusukat ganun yan ha? so una is the preferences pangalawa is political ramification urgency gadwell prestige utility corporate strategy environmental effects and health and safety rules reliability and political effects so kayo na yung mag-search ng mga uh, ano mga ganyan ano, gusto nyo pang patutunan niya pero anyway uh, it's just uh, factors no? that cannot be measured or non-responsive uh, to price factors. Uh, the second is the price. So, the law of supply and demand is uh, uses uh, one general assumption that is called as the Citeris Paribus. That is a Latin word for other things being equal. So, ibig sabihin yan, uh, yung demand or ang supply curve is dalawa lang talaga yung relationship. No? We have the abscissa and the or the x and y axis. Where yung x axis niya, yun yung quantity. No? So, if we talks about quantity, it could be a demand or a supply. So, yung vertical axis niya naman, yun yung price. Yun. So, the assumption behind a demand curve or a supply curve is that no relevant economic factors other than the product price. So, ibig sabihin, equal hat yung mga economic factors or yung mga non-quanti, yung iba pang factors na, na makakapik doon sa, doon sa supply and demand. Na? So, ginawang equal hat yun, constant yun. So, maliban lang sa product price. Na? Bali, yung product price yung uh, nagbabari. Yan, no? So, economists call this uh, assumption as Citeris Paribus. So, other things being equal. 
So, any given demand or supply curve is based on Ceteris Paribus assumption that all else is held equal. So, ganun yan. No? Kaya yung demand and supply is in function of the price. Dahil sa assumption na Ceteris Paribus. So, ganito yung magiging uh, figure niya. May kita nyo yung level ng Ceteris Paribus. So, we have also the x-axis which refers to the quantity. And meron tayong tatlong uh, power supply curve. The S1, S2, and S3. And we have the y-axis as the price. So, may kita mo na dalawa talaga yung uh, factors lang na, na yung quantity is affected by price. Uh, provided that all things are held equal. So, additional lang to na topic. Uh, this is uh, kasi tayo, consumer tayo, okay lang tayo kung meron tayong mga kumpanya o meron tayong mga sariling planta na pagawaan. So, bali, nagiging producer ka. Pero kung tayo ng mga consumer, consumers, so, kailangan din natin matutunan yung mga ganitong mga variables. So, in include ko na lang din dito sa dito sa ano ko sa presentation ko okay so this is from investopedia economics impact every moment of our lives and there are some basic concepts that everyone should understand scarcity refers to the limited means available to meet unlimited wants there's always a choice to be made for example, there's a finite supply of wheat grown every year, but there are billions of people who want bread, cereal, and beer from that wheat. How do we decide to use our scarce supply of wheat? One answer is a market system. Supply and demand drives the market system. Say the demand for beer is high. This means beer brewers can raise their prices, so there's more money to be made by changing wheat into beer than by grinding it into flour. So more people make beer until there's too much of it and prices sink. Meanwhile, the price of flour has grown as the supply of wheat dwindled. So now more producers buy wheat to make flour. The concept of costs and benefits applies to areas of rational expectations and choices. People are likely to make choices that provide the most benefit with the least cost. A consumer will buy the best beer she can afford, not necessarily the best beer in the store. Incentives make the world go round. Frequently, when things go wrong, it's because the incentives weren't aligned with the objective. When incentives and goals are lined up, the benefits can be tremendous. Some firms use profit sharing or performance bonuses to entice workers to meet a company's objectives. concepts na kailangan din natin malaman as consumers. So, kung gusto nyo pa ng maraming videos from Vistafedia, so, puntahan, puntahan nyo lang kayo, uh, puntahan nyo lang yung YouTube channel nila. Ang dami nilang mga gandang videos na uh, matutunan nyo talaga. So, next topic natin is engineering economic analysis. So, this would be the part 2. Okay, thank you.